Happy Friday, everybody. Wilbur is still asleep today, so I'm holding him quietly. A lot happened last chapter. Charlotte found a new word to write in her web, thanks to Templeton. Uh, it's day 19 of our chick journals. That means there's only a couple days left. All right. Dr. Dorian. The next day was Saturday. Fern stood at the kitchen sink, drying the breakfast dishes as her mother washed them. Mrs. Arable worked silently. She hoped Fern would go out and play with the other children instead of heading to the Zuckerman's barn to sit and watch animals. Charlotte is the best storyteller I ever heard, said Fern, poking her dish towel into the cereal bowl. Fern said her mother sternly, you must not invent things. You know spiders don't tell stories. Spiders can't talk. Charlotte can, replied Fern. She doesn't talk very loud, but she talks. What kind of stories does she tell, asked Mrs. Arable. Well, began Fern. She told us about a cousin of hers who caught a fish in her web. Don't you think that's fascinating? Fern, dear, how would a fish get caught in a spider's web, said Mrs. Arable. You know it couldn't happen. You're making this up. Oh, it happened all right, replied Fern. Charlotte never fibs. This cousin of hers built a web across the stream. One day, she was hanging around on the web, and a tiny fish leapt into the air and got tangled in the web. The fish got caught by one fin, mother. Its tail was wildly thrashing and shining in the sun. Can't you just see the web sagging dangerously under the weight of the fish? Charlotte's cousin kept slipping in, dodging out, and she was beaten mercilessly over the head by the wildly thrashing fish, dancing in, dancing out, throwing fern, snapped her mother. Stop it. Stop inventing these wild tales. I'm not inventing, said Fern. I'm just telling you the facts. What really happened, asked her mother, whose curiosity began to get the better of her. Charlotte's cousin won. She wrapped up the fish and then she ate him when she got good and ready. Spiders have to eat the same as the rest of us. Yes, I suppose they do, said Mrs. Arable vaguely. Charlotte has another cousin who is a balloonist. She stands on her head and lets out a line and carried aloft by the wind. Mother, wouldn't you simply love to do that? Yes, I would, replied. Yes, I would, come to think of it, replied Mrs. Arable. But Fern, darling, I wish you would go out and play with other outdoors today instead of going to Uncle Homer's barn. Find someone, some of your playmates to do something nice outdoors. You're spending so much time in the barn. It isn't good for you to be alone so much. Alone, said Fern. Alone? My best friends are in the barn cellar. It is a very sociable place. Not at all lonely. Fern disappeared after a while, walking down the road towards Zuckerman's. Her mother dusted, dusted the city room. As she worked, she kept thinking about Fern. Doesn't seem natural for a girl to be so into, interested in animals. Finally, Mrs. Arable made up her mind. She would call on our old Dr. Dorian and ask for his advice. She got in the car and drove his, over to his office in the village. Dr. Dorian had a thick beard. He was glad to see Mrs. Arable and gave her a comfortable chair. It's about Fern, she explained. Fern spends entirely too much time in the Zuckerman's barn. Doesn't seem normal. She sits on a stool in a corner of the barn cellar near the pigeon, pig pen and watches animals hour after hour. She just sits and listens. Dr. Dorian leaned back and closed his eyes. How enchanting, he said. Must be real nice and quiet down there. Homer has sheep, hasn't he? Yes, said Mrs. Arable. But it all started with that, that pig we let her raise on a bottle. She calls him Wilbur. Homer bought, bought the pig, and ever since that, ever since it left our place, Fern has been going to her Uncle Homer's to be near it. I've been hearing things about that pig, said Dr. Dorian, opened his eyes. They say he's quite a pig. Have you heard about the web that appeared in the spider, the word that appeared in the spider's web, asked Mrs. Arable nervously. Yes, replied the doctor. Well, do you understand it, asked Mrs. Arable. Understand what? Do you understand how there could be writing in a spider's web? Oh, no, said Dr. Dorian. I don't understand it. But... For the matter of fact, I don't understand how a spider learned to spin a web in the first place. When the words appeared, everyone said that they were a miracle, but nobody pointed out that the web itself is a miracle. What a mirac What's miraculous about a spider web, said Mrs. Arable. I don't see how you could say a web is a miracle. It's just a web. Ever try to spin one, asked Dr. Dorian. Mrs. Arable shifted uneasily in her chair. No, she replied, but I can crochet a dolly and I can knit a sock. Sure, said the doctor, but someone taught you, didn't they? Here's a picture of Mrs. Arable and Dr. Dorian. My mother taught me. Well, who taught a spider? A young spider knows how to spin a web without any instructions from anyone on how to do it with anybody. Don't you regard this as a miracle? I suppose so, said Mrs. Arable. I never looked at it like that before. Still, I don't understand those words got into the web. I don't understand it, and I don't like what I don't understand. None of us do, said Dr. Doring, sighing. <sighs> I'm a doctor. Doctors are supposed to understand everything. But I don't understand everything, and I don't intend to let it worry me. Mrs. Arable fidgeted. 
Fern says the animals talk to her, Dr. Dorian. Do you believe animals talk? I've never heard one say anything, he replied, but that proves nothing. It's quite, po quite possible that an animal has spoken civilly to me, and I just didn't catch the remark because I wasn't paying attention. Children pay better attention than grown-ups. If Fern says that the animals in Zuckerman's barn talk, I'm quite ready to believe her. Perhaps if people talk less, animals would talk more. People are insistent talker. incessant talkers. I can give you my word on that. Well, I feel better about Fern, said Mrs. Arable. You don't think I need to worry about her. Does she look well? asked the doctor. Oh, yes. Appetite good? Oh, yes. She's always hungry. Sleep well at night? Yes. Then don't worry, said the doctor. Do you think she'll ever start thinking about something besides pigs, sheep, and geese, and spiders? How old is Fern? She's eight. Well, said Dr. Dorian, I think she will always love animals, but I doubt that she'll spend her entire life in Homer Zuckerman's barn cellar. How about boys? Does she know any boys? She knows Henry Fussy, said Mrs. Arable brightly. Dr. Dorian closed his eyes again and went into deep thought. Henry Fussy, he mumbled. Hmm, remarkable. Well, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Let Fern associate with friends in the barn if she wants to. I would say offhand that spiders and pigs were fully as interesting as Henry Fussy. Yet, I predict that the day will come when Henry will, when even Henry will drop some chance remark that catches Fern's attention. It's amazing how children change from year to year. How's Avery, he asked, opening his eyes wide. Oh, Avery, chuckled Mrs. Arable. Avery is always fine, of course. He gets into poison ivy, and he gets stung by wasps and bees, and brings frogs and snakes home, and breaks everything he lays his hands on. He's fine. Good, said the doctor. Mrs. Arable said goodbye and thanked Dr. Dorian very much for his advice. She felt greatly relieved. Next chapter on Monday, the crickets.